Good afternoon, welcome to EduSat Network. Friend, as you know, today we have lecture on ancient India. We will talk about uh, Harappan civilization, its origin, its uh, extent and also, you know, it expanded in different direction and uh, have a different aspect in different uh, social, economic and political aspect of the Harappan civilization. Sipul. And we will also talk about uh, finally decline of the Harappan civilization. Uh, and you know it's uh, lasted for many years, but uh, in one hour we'll try to cover just uh, dominant feature of that period. And for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio Dr. Sankar Kumar. He teaches history in uh, Hindu College, uh, Delhi, uh, Delhi University of Delhi. So on behalf, I welcome Dr. Sankar Kumar for the Edsat lecture on this very topic. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Amrindji, and uh, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, today uh, we would be talking about uh, the. Harappan civilization, uh, also referred to as the Indus Valley civilization. Uh, we will try to look at its uh, origin, uh, extent, uh, the settlement pattern, subsistence pattern, the other aspects of social and economic life that characterizes uh, the Indus Valley civilization and also try and have a look at the uh, issue of decline of Harappan civilization. Now, as uh, we know that uh, Harappan civilization stands for uh, what, what we know in Indian history as the emergence of Bronze Age civilization. So uh, in contrast to the developments up to Neolithic and Chalcolithic cultures, uh, this northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent uh, including the present day Pakistan uh, and the northwestern uh, states of India as it exists today, uh, including Punjab, Haryana, uh, Rajasthan, even Gujarat and some uh, uh, western part of the uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh as well. So uh, these areas uh, uh, together underwent uh, a significant change mm -hmm. Uh, say at around uh, 2500 BC onwards, uh, the chronological bracket uh, conventionally assigned to the mature phase of Harappan civilization happens to be 2500 BC to say around 1700 or 1750 BC. So this is the time uh, which is associated uh, this, this particular area that we talked of, this particular area experienced. Uh, what we understand as emergence of Bronze Age civilization or flourishment of Bronze Age civilization. Uh, there are uh, quite a few characteristics of a Bronze Age civilization uh, and uh, to talk about that just to have a kind of an idea in terms of contrast that it represented with the earlier cultures uh, because we have already discussed uh, the developments uh, around Mehergarh in the context of prehistorical development particularly with reference to the Neolithic cultures. Therefore, it would be a little bit pertinent here to, to talk about as to what civilization meant in this particular historical context. Uh, civilization uh, historically means a significant leap in the process of human development or social development whereby the people characterizing uh, the society or social life come to have class differentiation, meaning thereby that uh, the egalitarianism uh, of the past uh, gets, uh, gets uh, somewhat diluted and people get, uh, uh, you can say, segregated into distinct economic and social classes. So there is a little bit of the sense of division of labor also associated with it. Alongside, uh, civilization also stands for uh, some kind of an urban development. So urban characteristics, urban features come to, uh, uh, come to characterize uh, a civilization. Uh, this is again in contrast to the rural kind of settlements uh, 
uh, the the hutments uh, and so forth that we talked in the context of uh, neolithic and chalcolithic uh, cultures uh, alongside uh, since uh, uh, the society is segregated into classes uh, urban features could be seen therefore a uh, natural uh, almost a natural concomitant to these development happens to be uh, emergence of urban centers uh, emergence of urban centers trade and commerce uh, so uh, we also start getting evidence of long distance institutionalized exchange referred to as trade and commercial activity now alongside this there is also usually uh, development of scripts that is uh, the 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 skill of writing uh, and and uh, harappan civilization uh, does give us uh, evidence of that also therefore uh, in the light of these developments uh, the, this this uh, particular change that this period represents uh, 2500 bc to around 1700 bc uh, we tend to use this uh, this term civilization instead of uh, the usual uh, uh, culture suffix that we add uh, that we use for other uh, you know kind of developments in the preceding and even in the subsequent times now talking about the origin of uh, the harappan civilization what we should keep in mind is that uh, there is no unanimity amongst the historians uh, but broadly uh, there are two propositions uh, with respect to uh, the uh, origin of uh, the civilization. Uh, one is uh, uh, that this civilization probably uh, flourished as a result of some kind of uh, contact with the with the uh, pre-existing Bronze Age civilizations in the vicinity. Uh, one can think of the uh, the uh, uh, the Egyptian uh, civilization, Bronze Age civilization. One can also uh, think of the uh, the uh, Iranian uh, uh, this thing. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, not Iranian, but uh, the Iraq area. Uh, so uh, it, it 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 is uh, it is argued that uh, perhaps from the Tigris Euphrates area. Uh, which had already undergone uh, uh, civilizational change, uh, some kind of uh, urban influence came around this time and that triggered the process of civilizational change in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Indus area, in the, uh, in the uh, Harappan area. So, uh, this is one proposition. Of course, we have uh, uh, quite a few uh, uh, evidence of uh, uh, exchange, uh, material exchange uh, between uh, these two Bronze Age uh, uh, civilizational areas, uh, quite a few Indus uh, Valley stuff uh, are, are uh, uh, found uh, in the Tigris Euphrates uh, area and uh, uh, similarly uh, uh, objects from uh, that civilization are to be to be seen uh, are to be found in the archaeological excavations uh, of Indus Valley as well. So, uh, uh, as as a uh, on on the evidence of uh, uh, such such material, uh, uh, you can say uh, testimonies. Uh, it is also argued that the idea of urbanism, the idea of uh, trade and commerce, could have. Uh, could have uh, hit this area uh, as a result of this contact and that could have uh, could have led to uh, you can say uh, this this uh, this uh, uh, quantum leap from uh, cultural uh, historical uh, stage to civilizational uh, historical stage so this is one proposition uh, the other proposition which uh, happens to be more credible because it is uh, it is uh, supported by uh, more evidences and it uh, seems to be more uh, more uh, convincing also and that is uh, that one should look at the sequence of preceding material developments in this particular area itself that is indus area itself and then try to work out that uh, 
whether uh, the material substratum uh, required that critical material substratum which is required for the flourishment of an uh, bronze age civilization uh, uh, whether, whether this this uh, uh, whether whether this condition is satisfied in this area or not and if we examine this particular issue then we find that uh, particularly the site of Mehargarh which is uh, a Neolithic site and was uh, under settlement right from the uh, 7th to 6th uh, millennium BC itself. So, much before the, the settlement uh, that we get to see in the form of Harappan civilization, uh, people had started inhabiting this area 3000, 4000 years before. So, uh, and as a result of incremental developments, uh, archaeologists have been able to identify distinct uh, cultural phases in terms of archaeological artifacts, uh, so much so that uh, say, say period uh, say up to say uh, 3200 BC to 2600 BC, uh, there are quite a few number of settlements which, which, uh, which are together referred to as the early Harappan settlements. Uh, early Harappan settlements meaning thereby that these cultures in this particular area had come to anticipate uh, quite a few material as well as social and cultural uh, attributes which we get to see as a, as a kind of characterizing elements of Harappan civilization that is mature Harappan civilization. Uh, for instance, uh, mud bricks, even burnt mud bricks had started being used uh, much before the, uh, the start of the mature phase of Harappan civilization in this particular area. Similarly, uh, the motifs, the, the uh, you can say religious or cultural motifs that we get to see imprinted on several Harappan seals as well as potteries in the mature phase had been uh, in use uh, from, from uh, periods uh, which, which is uh, before the start of the uh, uh, mature Harappan phase. So, even in the early Harappan uh, cultural stratum, we do find such motifs like horned DT or you can say uh, the cobra uh, uh, snake being represented, uh, similarly the people motif. Uh, and so forth. So, uh, some kind of uh, cultural you can say uniformity uh, had already been achieved uh, much before the start of the mature phase in this particular area and it was not limited to one particular site, but as we as we said that uh, some kind of uniformity had been achieved meaning thereby that people had been in contact with with the with the cultures in the vicinity and some kind of uh, homogeneity some kind of uh, uh, uniformity uh, was uh, already in display even in the preceding period this is not to say and this is very crucial for our understanding that this happened at the cost of flourishing of the local culture because uh, uh, a good understanding of harappan civilization would be one in which we do not sacrifice the idea of heterogeneous developments for homogeneity of Harappan uh, characteristic elements. Because what is, what is important for us to understand is that despite the overwhelming presence of Harappan characteristics, Harappan uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, attributes in the mature phase also, we have quite a few evidence of parallel or simultaneous uh, flourishing of local traditions. And this became more prominent once Harappan civilization declined once Harappan uh, civilization uh, uh, failed to, to make its overwhelming presence felt. So, that is the time that is say around uh, 1700 uh, or 1600 BC from there on, we again find that local cultural elements uh, in several areas which had been in existence uh, from uh, preceding period, they again become uh, archaeologically more prominent. So, uh, uh, this, is, this, is, this is something which, which, is, uh, which is very central to our understanding of Harappan civilization from the 
perspective of uh, indigenous or you can say uh, local roots. Uh, so this is this is uh, uh, you can say that the Mehargarh example, the cultural sequences attested at Mehargarh and in the adjoining areas, which subsequently went on to support uh, uh, Harappan civilization. <coughs> that has to be that has to be taken care of while understanding the uh, the uh, local origin of harappan civilization of course around 2600 bc quite a few new elements did come to characterize the civilizational phase of harappan civilization or the mature phase of harappan civilization for example the uh, the uh, tradition of writing the practice of uh, scripts uh, similarly, uh, the town planning, uh, these are the organized uh, town planning uh, with uh, well defined uh, um, uh, structure for exit of water and so forth. Uh, so these elements uh, were new and uh, uh, one, one can understand that uh, the, uh, these elements uh, could have uh, come to characterize Harappan life only around this time. So one, one, uh, one does not know how to account for uh, such uh, elements, but uh, in history uh, uh, things happen uh, not in isolation and we should not be only segregating uh, the causes of, of the origin of Harappan civilization merely into outside causes or extraneous causes and local causes, because uh, things happen uh, uh, simultaneously and it is quite possible that uh, quite a few elements uh, had been uh, had been taken from from outside as well quite a few practice for example the fully laid bodies uh, uh, as part of burial practice was not to be seen uh, in the in the in the cultures preceding uh, harappan civilization or mature phase of harappan, harappan civilization but uh, uh, from around 2600 bc we do get to see this so we have historians uh, uh, arguing uh, about uh, whether the influence was from outside or it was part of the uh, local tradition and so forth. And uh, the final word is uh, yet to come, but uh, what is important for us is to uh, understand uh, the substrate, material substratum of Harappan civilization in terms of agrarian output, agricultural output and also pastoral elements, uh, the nomadic character of the Indo-Iranian Plato uh, area which, which was very crucial so far as emergence of uh, Harappan civilization is concerned because it was only uh, around the Kachi plain that these two contrasting uh, lifestyles uh, um, uh, were allowed to, to, to meet and, and uh, generate something, uh, something different, something more organized, uh, something more regular. Uh, leading to leading to flourishing of Harappan civilization on a very solid uh, material basis. So, uh, pastoral elements have been accounted for, agrarian possibilities have already been accounted for in the sense that Indus people inhabiting the plain area of the Indus flood plains, they were in contact with the uh, pastoral people from the Iranian Plato uh, and, and they met and exchanged and, and that is how perhaps uh, some kind of cultural uniformity uh, uh, was, was, at, uh, was attained even, even in the pre-Harappan period. Now, Having discussed uh, the broad arguments related to the origin of Harappan civilization, let us now let us now kind of understand as to uh, what are the evidences uh, on the basis of which we we come to we come to uh, definitely say that uh, the uh, the well organized kind of civilizational structure uh, that harappa represents uh, uh, was was uh, actually uh, or, or uh, is actually historically testified uh, we all we all uh, uh, do understand that uh, quite a few big harappan cities for example harappa and mohenjodaro they have yielded archaeological evidence of uh, storage uh, facilities. Now, storage facilities uh, characterizing or you can say grain storage facilities 
characterizing uh, the settlement pattern of a big town is something which is understood in this particular context in the sense that towns historically are defined with respect to or are understood with respect to uh, the settlement of non-agrarian population. Now, continued settlement of non-agrarian population engaged in different uh, economic and uh, uh, other uh, political pursuits or cultural pursuits uh, was possible only uh, when uh, some kind of a mechanism uh, already ensured uh, regular and safe supply of uh, food material uh, for uh, the consumption of the urban population. Now, it is in this context that uh, the storage uh, facility, grain storage facilities uh, at Mohanjodro and Harappa are both understood. Now, uh, this, this tells us that uh, probably uh, uh, the rural hinterland uh, had acquired the critical capacity in terms of agrarian output to generate that amount of surplus which was required for the uh, for the sustenance of urban population uh, in the mature phase of Harappa. It is only, uh, only at uh, this stage that you can think of specialized uh, pursuits, a specialized division of labor, which is quite evident uh, in the, in the uh, Harappan artifacts, in the Harappan uh, remains that we have. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, settlements which, which appear to be exclusively industrial settlement. Industrial uh, settlement here uh, would, would, would mean not the present uh, mass production kind of uh, industrial uh, imagery, but uh, say production of tools or production of say uh, ornaments, bangles, uh, uh, some kind of ornaments made out of seashells, conch and, and uh, several other say beads, bead making industry or uh, some other equipments also uh, made of stones and, and other kinds of semi precious uh, metals also, semi precious stones also. So, uh, for example, Sukur is, 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 uh, is one example of uh, one such uh, industrial site. Uh, now, what, what Balakot area uh, on the Arabian coast uh, uh, also stands out uh, as, uh, as uh, another industrial site. Now, what it means is that people specializing in making these tools continuously inhabited uh, these uh, uh, sites and uh, they, they could survive uh, generations together uh, only because the structure of, uh, uh, of uh, ensuring food supplies and uh, uh, the structure of the market ensuring uh, uh, some kind of income uh, from their pursuits and so forth, they were all in place. It, 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 is, it is only in this context that uh, such kinds of uh, structures can be, uh, can be justified in the, in the uh, Harappan times. Uh, similarly, uh, in terms of uh, the critical agricultural capacity that we discussed, it would be very pertinent to also talk about the, uh, the uh, landscape the, the agricultural potential, the soil typology, average rainfall, uh, the technological intervention, wh which were all factors in, in, in ensuring uh, uh, or in, in maximizing agricultural output, which was so central uh, for, for uh, the continued existence of uh, civilization of this magnitude. Now, of course, uh, when we are talking of Harappa, we should be mindful of the fact that we are talking of a pre-iron age. Uh, in terms of metals which could be used in agricultural operations, it was only copper and bronze uh, and not iron. Uh, iron uh, when mixed with carbon uh, or in the steel form uh, becomes very hard and can dig deep into the surface, uh, thereby utilizing the subsoil moisture also. But that was not a possibility in Harappan times because of the absence of iron technology. So, uh, uh, 
what we can think of is pre iron technological uh, operations uh, characterizing uh, harappan agriculture and even archaeologically uh, this is what we get uh, uh, so far as uh, uh, harappan context is concerned so uh, we have furrowed marks uh, of plowed field uh, from kalibangan uh, some uh, some of uh, these evidences even come from pre harappan times meaning thereby that people had started plow agriculture if they could be using wooden plow or maybe uh, a little bit of copper could have been used in that as well but certainly not iron now what it tells us is that people are aware of uh, plowing uh, and uh, perhaps uh, these plows were uh, driven by uh, oxen and uh, uh, using uh, the traction power of oxen uh, is already testified uh, in the harappan period uh, in the context of agriculture because we have quite a few terracotta figurines or quite a few paintings depicting this particular scene and uh, even uh, material artifacts have been found uh, to be testifying this so uh, agriculture was done but what was the output uh, what was the efficiency of this agriculture depended on several other factors we have already discussed the uh, the uh, limitation in terms of the absence of iron similarly yet another limitation was in terms of the climatic conditions because overall this harappan area happens to fall in in what we can uh, what we can say as semi arid zone the average rainfall uh, uh, say uh, uh, say uh, uh, moves from 20 cm to 40 cm uh, uh, per annum so uh, in 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 uh, this particular uh, you can say uh, context of rainfall uh, it's 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 not very much suitable for for intensive agriculture now despite that uh, uh, civilization flourished in this area and uh, people continued to uh, to live in the mature phase for say around um, 500 or 600 years uh, or even more than that now uh, this also uh, 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 you know highlights another limitation of uh, harappan economy or harappan agriculture uh, that it had all uh, to operate within these climatic limitations uh, technological interventions uh, uh, you can say artificial irrigation so forth recently uh, uh, very interesting data have come from uh, sites like dholavira which which does tell us that water management system was was uh, uh, was significantly advanced and uh, uh it could be the case that uh, they had uh, started using artificial uh, irrigational techniques also in order to maximize the output and which is quite understandable uh, from the point of the view of the fact uh, that it uh, all lay in a uh, in an overall semi arid conditions so in the absence of uh, uh, utilization of say uh, underground water and so forth it would not have been possible to to sustain uh, this this number of population for this uh, uh, duration of time so these things can be can be uh, presumed uh, uh, in in harappan context as well now apart from the uh, the uh, you can say main stay which which uh, uh, of course was agriculture we have a very robust uh, evidence of long distance and short distance trade and commercial activities coming from different sites of harappa or harappan civilization and different towns of uh, indus valley civilization also mohenjodaro harappa kalibangan lothal and so forth now there is one one uh, another another important thing that we should we should keep in mind because this also is uh, quite structural to any bronze age civilization bronze uh, or you can say copper because bronze is an alloy uh, it does not uh, uh, occur uh, uh, in in uh, natural state as bronze uh, but copper is a uh, relatively a uh, scarce metal it's it's not uh, ubiquitous uh, uh, as iron now uh, as a result of this 
you know, uh, it's it's not possible to find copper any and everywhere, the way uh, iron uh, happens because uh, uh, the possibility of finding iron or sources of iron uh, are of course more as compared to copper. Now. Given the natural uh, distribution of uh, sources of copper, it is uh, it is said that uh, the Bronze Age civilizations are structurally dependent on long distance contacts or uh, mm -hmm. uh, you can say trade and uh, uh, commercial activity. In the absence of this, it's it's not possible to to link uh, uh, various areas because if copper has to be used by one particular uh, settlement or one particular site, then it has to be procured from long distance. So unless you have a very developed uh, system of uh, trade and commercial contact uh, in the context of Bronze Age civilization, uh, it would not be possible to sustain uh, such such uh, significant population for this uh, significant uh, period of time. So uh, uh, the the uh, existence of trade and commercial activities has to be understood in the overall context of Bronze Age culture uh, or Bronze Age civilization as well. Apart from this, there are very direct evidences of uh, 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 long distance exchange uh, and also the, the, uh, the institutional uh, factors which facilitated that and that is what uh, commerce is. So uh, for example, uh, quite a few sites uh, uh, in the mainland of Harappa uh, used lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli happens to be a semi precious stone uh, which is not locally available. It is uh, the, the, uh, the nearest source of lapis lazuli uh, from Harappa happens to be uh, say Badakshan area in the uh, Oxus uh, river zone. So, uh, Harappans had some kind of a trading outpost there and from there they used to procure uh, this particular semi precious stone, work over it uh, at the local industrial sites and perhaps it was uh, made for uh, elitist kind of uh, uh, consumption. Uh, and this uh, this uh, can be can be understood in the context of what we have already discussed that it uh, Harappan society was a stratified society it was a class divided society meaning thereby that uh, some sections of the people were rich enough wealthy enough had enough resources to engage or to to uh, to you can say uh, to uh, get into these kinds of uh, conspicuous uh, consumptions, luxury consumptions as well. So, uh, as a result of this, these uh, trade networks uh, could have uh, begun and over a period of time it got institutionalized to the extent that even, uh, uh, even uh, materials of mass consumption could have been transacted over significant distances. Uh, we have evidence of uh, uh, overseas contacts also uh, with the uh, Iraq area, with the Egypt area that is contemporary Bronze Age civilization that we have already discussed. So, uh, uh, from the, the, uh, the wood resource, uh, the timber resource uh, could, be, could be procured from Kashmir area uh, down the flow of the rivers. Uh, to uh, to say uh, the middle areas uh, of of uh, Harappan civilization, so they were using uh, uh, the, the, these uh, routes, not only the uh, mainland route, but also waterways or riverways uh, to to facilitate their trade and uh, commercial activities. Uh, now, yet another component of trade and commerce happens to be uh, weights and measures, uh, which are which are very systematically present in Harappan times. Uh, similarly, there are uh, quite a few uh, seals, uh, seals and ceilings, which have been uh, discovered from uh, Indus Valley area. Now, these seals and ceilings uh, uh, contain or or uh, exhibit uh, ownership marks. Uh, now, these ownership marks uh, uh, stands for some kind of uh, uh, merchandise. Uh, you can say uh, some uh, stuff were supposed to be sent to some other area and 
that is where uh, uh, seals were put uh, on those merchandise. Lothal uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, one uh, such site where several seals strewn with, uh, uh, with bags uh, uh, or, or you can say some uh, threads of bags in which perhaps the merchandise was uh, put. So, uh, that, that also explains the context in which these seals should be, should be understood uh, by us. Uh, and of course, uh, it could uh, it could suffice as some kind of uh, you can say monetizing agency or uh, you can say uh, currency, or else uh, even uh, some kind of stamp of authority. But definitely, it has to be understood in the context of trade and commercial activity. Uh, so uh, this this is uh, about uh, yet another uh, important economic pursuit apart from agriculture that Harappans engaged in. Similarly, uh, usually uh, we, we lose sight of this, but we should be very mindful of this and that is apart from agriculture and uh, trade and commercial uh, activities. Uh, Harappans uh, relied uh, on pastoral activities also. Now, uh, this is a remnant of a past practice uh, which continued in the Harappan times and uh, uh, several uh, historians and archaeologists have argued it uh, from different uh, perspectives to, to, to buttress this particular viewpoint that uh, pastoralism or pastoral activities also uh, was uh, a characterizing feature of uh, Harappan life. Now, uh, for instance, uh, Shirin Ratnagar talks of uh, the urban fraction. What she does is to work out uh, the, uh, the uh, location of uh, different sites in Harappa area. Similarly, she looks at uh, uh, the Tigris Euphrates area, which is yet another contemporary Bronze Age civilization, Nile area, and then she says that uh, the urban fraction in uh, uh, Indus Valley is quite low, meaning thereby that two urban centers are separated by huge mass of uninhabited land, and yet they show uh, cultural similarity or economic similarity economic uniformity. Now, how could that uh, have been attained? Of course, and then she argues that uh, it, is, uh, it is probably through the agency of the pastoral people who are, uh, who are uh, crisscrossing these areas as part of their seasonal migration, seasonal movement and hence uh, you can say that they become the vehicles or carriers of cultural elements uh, from one area and uh, transmit it uh, to other areas and that is how this kind of uniformity could have been achieved. And uh, of course, the, uh, the artistic uh, references, the artistic uh, uh, you can say remnants of Harappan civilization also uh, testify to the overbearing presence of uh, pastoral way of life in Harappan life. So, uh, this is about different, uh, you can say this is about the spectrum of economic activities characterizing uh, uh, Harappan life, agriculture, trade and commerce, uh, little bit of uh, uh, tool making and, and uh, other kinds of industrious jobs and also pastoralism. Now, having, having discussed this, uh, uh, the stratification issue in, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of social uh, segregation. Uh, is is also uh, argued from the point of view of the uh, grave goods which have been uh, which have been discovered so there is uh, there is a you know a great uh, element of you can say uh, heterogeneity so some graves appear to be uh, rich graves because the uh, the goods which were supposedly kept uh, to ensure uh, uh, comfortable life, uh, uh, you can say post death, uh, contained uh, semi precious stones or gold or, or other ornaments and some graves uh, contained uh, relatively poor material, material uh, uh, you can say uh, artifacts, uh, 
and that, that testifies to the fact that uh, this this kind of social segregation was very much at place similarly even the architecture of the household uh, or, or uh, different categories of houses also uh, do tell us that uh, some houses were big uh, imperial while some other houses were very small and one can uh, safely presume that it was uh, uh, it was uh, on economic considerations or social considerations and uh, that that stands for this economic and social uh, uh, stratification now having talked about uh, uh, these uh, we 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 should also uh, uh, think of uh, the other aspects of harappan life uh, in terms of uh, uh, some of the practices which which uh, even continued thereafter uh, that would be more pertinent with reference to the uh, decline of harappan civilization uh, so we should we would be talking about that uh, when when we come to the issue of decline but uh, so far as the religious uh, life is concerned uh, well uh, what 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 we should be mindful of is that religious and political aspects of harappan life can best be captured uh, with a source which is unfortunately not available to us uh, meaning thereby that uh, one can reconstruct uh, the economic life or one can reconstruct uh, the subsistence pattern with reference to the material evidence which we have in plenty for harappan civilization but to reconstruct political life or uh, uh, you can say religious life uh, with reference to uh, material evidence is a difficult propos proposition what i am hinting is that harappan scripts uh, have not been deciphered uh, and uh, apart from uh, uh, apart from uh, our inability to decipher it even otherwise the sheer quantity of harappan scripts that we have at our disposal is so less that uh, even if it is deciphered uh, there is uh, very little which can be uh, which it can illuminate in terms of in terms of our information uh, about harappan life because uh, uh, we don't have lengthy inscriptions we don't have a uh, very voluminous uh, uh, you know uh, instance of uh, harappan scripts and so forth so uh, only uh, one or two lines at uh, at the most that is what we we have uh, as part of harappan uh, specimen of a script so uh, so far as the uh, religious and uh, political structure is concerned uh, uh, with reference to political structure let, let me highlight this that uh, the sheer uniformity that we get to see uh, characterizing different aspects of harappan life for example the brick size the dimension of the brick uh, uh, conforms to one particular norm uh, all across harappan civilization different Settle, uh, different uh, settlements different cities and so forth betray the same dimension of uh, bricks similarly harappan distinct pottery tradition the mature harappan pottery tradition that is also widely distributed meaning thereby that a good area good uh, 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 space uh, displays uh, the similar kind of uh, artifactual uh, remains in the form of uh, harappan pottery and uh, which is distinct to its mature phase similarly the town planning uh, of course there are some um, uh, some uh, you can say exceptions but overall uh, the planning uh, the urban planning does follow similar norm now all these things and and uh, in addition to that uh, the uh, the uniformity of uh, uh, weights and measures uh for example they all follow the unit of 4 16 8 and so forth which is which which is uh, something which is in practice even now uh, in in uh, in india for example uh, char ana 8 ana uh, 12 ana and 16 ana 16 ana meaning thereby complete 360 degree uh, so we we 
tend to say even today it is sola anasach. Sola anasach means 100%. So that completes uh, the, the entity that we are talking of. And uh, the divisions are thought of with respect to uh, uh, entities in multiples of 4, 8, 12, 16. And so, uh, even even in weights, uh, apart from currency that we just talked of, even in weights, uh, the similar norm is followed: 250 grams, half kg, 750 grams, and then one kg. So, uh, this was the uh, norm uh, so far as weights and measures is concerned uh, during the Harappan times, and this was displayed uh, all across uh, the Harappan territory. And uh, that all all these uniformities presume some kind of uh, you can say existence of a central authority. Now, what was the nature of that central authority? We do not know in the absence of uh, written records. But certainly, there must have been some kind of a central uh, agency uh, which is which is ensuring that uh, this particular system functions in a particular uniform way. Now, this is again not to say that this uh, this killed the possibility of heterogeneous developments or, uh, or local developments. So, local traditions also thrived and flourished alongside, but what we understand as mature phase of Harappan civilization is best uh, symbolized uh, through these attributes. Now, uh, similarly, uh, uh, in the absence of written records, we cannot say uh, which particular class of people or which particular profession of uh, people were the rulers in Harappa. Some, some uh, historians say that it was the priestly class which perhaps uh, was also the king. Uh, some say that it could have been the trading class which, which, uh, uh, which were the ruling class. So, one does not know in the absence of uh, uh, written records uh, as to which particular class or we do not know even the name of any particular king. We do not know the, uh, the form of polity which was practiced, whether it was oligarchy, whether it was democracy, whether it was monarchy, whether it was uh, tribalism. So, these things we do not know. But uh, for sure what we can say is that there is uh, some element of uh, central agency uh, which, which was present there and which was regulating things. Now, having talked of uh, these aspects, uh, the settlement pattern, subsistence pattern and one more thing uh, about settlement pattern is that uh, we need not understand uh, the settlement uh, of Harappan sites merely with reference to the perennial rivers, existence of perennial rivers or the proximity of a site with uh, these perennial rivers, because quite a few uh, sites uh, from Harappan civilization have been discovered which are quite far away from uh, these rivers and they are situated on what we can understand as inhospitable areas. Meaning thereby that uh, sweet water is not available. The underground water must not have been sweet and yet people lived there. Uh, you, you, you do not uh, choose to settle or inhabit such areas uh, uh, on your own, but there could have been some kind of political compulsion or strategic concerns behind these. Uh, a good example of this in contemporary times could be uh, military outposts in Siachin area and so forth. No one wants to live there because the, the climatic conditions are very inhospitable and yet we, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we have uh, settlements in these areas uh, because of strategic concerns. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, in run of Kutch area, uh, or uh, the Arabian coast uh, which uh, receives uh, uh, high tides and so forth, we have quite a few such uh, uh, settlements which could have been garrisons, military garrisons or, or uh, 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 things like that. And uh, therefore, uh, the settlement pattern has to be understood even with, ref uh, with reference to strategic and political concerns and not only with reference to the conventional river valley civilization kind of a uh, design. Uh, so far as the decline of Harappan civilization is concerned, uh, historians have debated it, uh, debated it enough. Uh, some uh, uh, argued uh, in the beginning that it was as a result of Aryan invasion. 
So, Aryans came from the Central Asian region and they destroyed uh, uh, Harappan civilization. We have some Vedic references uh, to Indra being referred to as Purandhar. Uh, Purandhar means uh, destroyer of forts and who could have lived in forts other than uh, Harappan people around this time. So, if we uh, assign uh, say uh, dates around 1500 or 1700 BC to the uh, incoming of the Aryans, then this proposition holds true uh, that well there could have been some kind of uh, uh, some kind of a conflict situation between the Aryans and the uh, Harappan settlers and as a result of these skirmishes for which some historians even uh, argue that the, uh, the strewn uh, uh, skeletal remains uh, at Mohanjodro uh, which are found uh, all over uh, there are around uh, 26 skeletons which have been uh, found uh, all strewn uh, on the roads of Mohanjodro uh, could have been the result of this kind of a skirmish but that, that is a kind of labored attempt to, to uh, link up things in order to in order to justify this particular proposition that uh, it was as a result of Aryan invasion that uh, Harappan's uh, uh, or Harappan civilization declined. Because uh, in the recent 30 to 40 years of research, it is well established that uh, a good 200 or 300 years separate uh, the, the, uh, the decline of Harappan civilization and incoming of the uh, Aryans. Uh, then apart from this, uh, there are other propositions. Uh, some historians have argued from the point of view of the uh, seismically fragile uh, uh, geological conditions of Harappan area, uh, which resulted into decline because uh, as a result of uh, seismic uh, disturbances or tectonic uh, disturbances. Uh, quite a few areas got submerged as a result of uh, over flooding of, um, uh, of uh, immense proportions. Mohanjodro as a city is, uh, is uh, argued to have, uh, to have been settled quite a few times, more than three times and uh, silt deposits uh, uh, could be seen uh, up to a height of 80 uh, uh, meters or uh, uh, such, such heights which, 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 which uh, perhaps uh, thinks of or which perhaps uh, uh, indicates of uh, unusual kind of flooding. And uh, such unusual kind of flooding happens not as a result of usual flooding, but as a result of uh, tectonic disturbance. So, that is yet another proposition. Similarly, we have uh, one view which, which talks of the, uh, the shifting uh, uh, courses of the river. Uh, Indus itself is regarded as a very unstable uh, river from the point of view of uh, uh, shifting its uh, usual course. And uh, it is said that as a result of shifting away of the uh, uh, river course, quite a few settlements could have been uh, deprived of regular supplies of water and so forth. Uh, and as a result of it, uh, uh, people left or deserted that area, that settlement and preferred to settle elsewhere and that is how perhaps explains the decline of Harappan civilization. But again, there are limitations to these propositions because even if we regard these things as true, it can explain for the decline of only these sites which are uh, located on the river banks. It cannot uh, explain for the decline of sites which are uh, located far away from uh, river valleys. But even these, even um, uh, such sites uh, underwent uh, the process of decline. So, what accounts for that? So, uh, uh, apart from these propositions, uh, uh, there is another uh, rather credible proposition and that is the proposition of ecological imbalance. Uh, fair service uh, worked this out with reference to Mohanjodro. He, uh, he worked out uh, the or he estimated uh, the population of Harappa and also the uh, cattle. Uh, uh, that, that uh, people of Mohanjodro were perhaps using and then worked out the, uh, the uh, required uh, you can say uh, vegetational uh, uh, need for uh, this number of population. Uh, for example, he, he talked of, uh, he worked out the Mohanjodro's population to say 30, 350,000 or something. 
uh, and uh, and uh, sorry 35000 and uh, accordingly he worked out the number of cattle and then he said that in the adjoining hinterland uh, in the absence of uh, suitable climatic conditions in the absence of enough or adequate rainfall in the absence of intensive agriculture as a result of technological innovation or so uh, these hinterland uh, were over exploited there was over grazing and as a result of this denudation process uh, the ecological the critical ecological balance which had been sustaining uh, populations of this magnitude got broken and uh, as a result of this ecological imbalance and this is by and large uh, true for almost the entire zone of uh, Harappan civilization and as a result of breaking down of this critical uh, balance uh, between uh, the consumption and production uh, this process of decline uh, was triggered. So, uh, these are the existing propositions so far as decline of Harappan civilization is concerned. What is important for us is to understand that all parts of Harappan civilization did not undergo decline at the same point of time. So, there is enough space to accommodate uh, multiplicity of causes. So, uh, we should not be thinking of just one particular cause leading to the decline of this bigger civilization. So, there could be a number of causes leading to decline of a one particular area. For example, uh, uh, Mohanjodro area declined at one phase, other Punjab area or Baluchistan area declined at uh, another chronological uh, bracket and so there is some kind of a chronological variance even in the process of decline or the sequence of decline. Uh, similarly, the extent of decline is also uh, not uh, uniform. Uh, in fact, what actually declined uh, in Harappa uh, is only the urban aspects of life. For example, the post Harappan settlements do not give us the evidence of uh, say written scripts, they do not uh, give us the evidence of uh, typical Harappan bricks or town planning and so forth, but, uh, uh, but you can say Harappan potteries, typical Harappan potteries and some of the motives and some of the practices did continue even in the post Harappan phase and uh, resultantly our understanding should be uh, that. Uh, different regions of Harappa underwent decline at different points of time. There could be local as well as uh, some possibility of general reasons for these declines and we should not be uh, thinking only of one singular cause of decline of Harappan civilization. Okay. So, well friends, Dr. Kumar has briefly talked about the different aspect of uh, uh, Harappan civilization or we say Indus Valley civilization and it touched all important point and uh, also there are different debates so that will continue and uh, in coming years the uh, historians will find out the certain regions so I hope this lecture have given you a kind of insight and a kind of information which you need to understand in a holistic manner the Indus Valley civilization so with this hope we conclude the lecture and I thank all of you for watching the lecture on our behalf I thank Dr. Sankar Kumar also for giving such an insightful lecture. Thank you very much.